Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivaraman of iNoIndices.com. So I will be presenting Asian session live market analysis today on 27th May between 5 and 5.45 GMT. I will explain to you the expected market moves for this particular week, 27th to 31st of May, the last week of this particular this month of May. And the market is known to make volatile moves during the last week and the first week of every month. So we could come across some good volatile moves happening in the market. So that will give great either way trading opportunities. And let me explain to you the expected market moves for this particular week and later on come to that of the market reading. So this is algorithm based uh, derived forecast. So for the period 27th to 31st of May, so the expected market moves. 27th today, swing and firm up during that of the Japanese session, we could see, followed by a small dip during early European session and then rise is expected. And during the US session, swing and rise moves may be seen. And this is a derived forecast irrespective of the holidays, etc. But now if you see in the forex calendar, you come across holiday in UK as well as US. So there is a great possibility of the volume dwindling down. As a result, the market might make subdued moves. Then tomorrow, 28th of May, a quick rise and swing, high level swings are expected during Japanese session. And a swing and slide moves are expected during European session and swing and rise moves are expected during US session. So they will open high and then slide, then make the swing and slide and then swing and rise moves. Then 29th that midweek, then swing and rise during that of the Japanese session, swing then quick rise during, swing, quick rise and swing during the European session. They quickly rise and make high level swings and firm up initially and slide during that of the US session. So they could gain substantially the levels and finally make the US session a slide move. Then 30th May swing and rise moves are expected during Japanese session followed by swing and rise during European and a quick rise is expected during US session. If you carefully see that they drop first and buy and then quickly rise and book profit. That is what they are doing, doing it for a prolonged period. And this is an accumulation strategy. They book profit and add the profit to that of the new entries. As a result, the buy values come down. So they do prolonged consolidation. Mainly, the required volume, when it is not available, they may have to drag it for some more days in order to acquire the required volume in order to make a substantial rise only then they will be able to make massive profit their objective is mainly to make profit and not have any sentimental attachment to any currency pair then 31st may friday month end swing and rise during japanese session then swing and quick rise during european session and a dip and a rise are expected during us session so you will come across the market will be making the whipsaw moves while wide range swings and also you will come across slowly the gaining moves on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and then you will find there could be more visible gains in the market especially the numerator currencies. The next week that will be the 3rd to 7th of June the first week of the new month. So again, they are expected to make the monthly trend reversal moves and they are known to make the monthly trend reversal moves during the start of the month and the end of the month. This is mainly to handle the derivative market like options and futures where the people take the bet at the high level buy and the lower level sell and wait with a minimum premium and wait for the market to achieve the target and then make the money. If the market goes against them, they lose the money, whatever they have bet. So in that deriv derivative market, 
you know that the people take the extreme levels, higher level buy and the lower level sell positions, especially in options, where the premium might be very low. By bidding a few hundred dollars, they could earn a few thousand dollars. But what the players do it, they make it appear very attractive and suddenly make an adverse whip some move, thereby on either side the options will get expired with a loss so that the traders who have bet the option may not be able to get all the time the money. So this is the way during the month end and the month beginning they make the quick volatile or the whips are moves in the market mainly to handle the derivative market. And coming to the door of the market reading, use the live market code page and try to read there how exactly they are making the moves. So in the live market code page you come across the four majors, Euro, GBP, USDN and USDCHF. So Euro and GBP are numerator majors and JPY and CHF are the denominator majors. Then these two pairs are the commodity pairs. USD CAD, Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar are called as a commodity pairs because their values are expected to be determined based on the commodity market. Now coming to the current level, here you come across the bid and the ask. There is a small spread variation. There is three pips variation with regard to the bid and the ask. And some platforms offer even less like 0 0.5, 0 0.8 and things like that. A normal practice is about two to three pips variation with regard to the bid and the ask. And that will that is referred as the spread. And this spread is a profit for the platform providers. And then afterwards you come across the high set so far and the low set so far. So from the start of the day 0000 GMT, the market continued to make the swings and set the lows and the highs. Around 330 GMT, they set the initial low and the high. Around 330 GMT, they make the initial low and the high for the day and this is being referred as the initial low and the high by that of the players. So if you want to track the players, we need to note down the initial lows and the highs set during that particular time and later on try to read as they read the market because the players is not a single entity, they are spread all over the world and different parts of the world they have to manipulate the market and in order to make the market functioning or make the swings or uh, pretend alive they have to necessarily place the continuous orders so they have to place a higher level buy in order to rise the market or a lower level sell in order to drop the market and continue to make the trades and they have to keep the bid and they have to keep the ask and if nobody is staying, trying to take the bid or the ask, they trade among themselves. As a result, you find the market is floating. So you will be simply watching the market and you will be wondering who is trading. But the players trade among themselves and without any profit or loss in order to keep the market floating and alive so that when they make swings, people get interested and they think that there is a likely chance of euro going up or likely chance of euro coming down and then they try to commit the positions. And if there is a fixed bid and the ask and nobody will be interested and everybody will be interested in buying at the lowest level, everybody is interested, others will be interested in selling at the higher level and the market may not be able to reach those levels. So if they pretend as if you have missed the chance, then you go and grab it. So that is the trick of the trade. So that is why they keep the market floating. Then you come across the net change. This net change is from that of the previous day close. So from that of Friday close, Euro has come down around 11 pips. And this is an indication and which is used by that of the players in order to understand their limitations. So they can gain or lose about 150 pips net change level from that of the previous day close. So that they cannot make the market 
gaining about 1000 pips, dropping about 1000 pips and things like that in an unwieldy way. And in the year 1998 and 2000, 2001 and all, they used to make very huge swings in the market. About 600 to 800 pips swings will happen from that of the Japanese session to that of the US session. And especially in the case of Swiss franc, which was considered as a virulent currency. And then people were really afraid of committing positions in the market. When the volume improved, then the regulations came in. And as a result, you find that they have got the limitations. The bank cannot simply rise or drop in an unexpected way, in a very big way. And they can only do it for about 100 to 150 pips in a given day. And also they have the weekly limitation, monthly limitations, etc. That is why you come across the market is making either way moves. It cannot continuously rise or it cannot continuously drop. They have to make alternative moves. <coughs> Sorry. So that they will be able to float the market within the range specified for them by the nodal agencies. Now this the GMT time. So it is a 24 hours market. So currently it is 511 GMT. That means that from the start it is about 5 hours and 11 minutes gone and the market is making the floating. Now the numerator currencies when they show negative net change it is USD gaining move. The numerator when it gains it will be in green color positive. When the numerator is in negative net change that means the US dollar the denominator is gaining so euro when it is showing negative net change then it is USD gaining move GBB when it is showing positive net change it is USD weakening move two pips higher so it is in green so the US dollar is weakening and GBB is gaining, the numerator is gaining by 2 pips. Whereas Euro is showing the USD gaining move, GBB is showing USD weakening move. Then in the case of the denominator currency is USD Yen. So Yen is gaining and the numerator USD is losing 20 pips. So as a result you come across USD Yen when it is showing the 20 pips negative net change, it is USD weakening move. So just opposite to that of the numerator currencies. Because euro is in the numerator status of a ratio. Whereas yen is in the denominator status of a ratio. So as a result you find 20 pips negative net change indicate USD weakening move. So euro is showing USD gaining move, USD yen is showing USD weakening move and GBB is also showing USD weakening move. Then USD CHF, it's a denominator CHF which is showing 18 pips positive net change. So USD is gaining 18 pips and CHF is losing. So when USD CHF is gaining about 19 pips positive net change, it shows that USD CHF is showing USD gaining move. So you find the mixed type of moves among the four majors. So some are showing USD gaining, some are showing USD weakening and not all of them showing USD gaining or USD weakening move. So when all are showing USD gaining or USD weakening move, then you understand that they are going to, there is going to be a trend. But if they are showing mixed move, then it will be in the form of a small swings only. So this you need to understand. Whenever they make the contrary move, there is no point in taking positions in the majors. If we try to take position in majors, we will be holding for a long period and it may hardly make about 2-3 pips profit or 2-3 pips loss and it will be testing your patience. So that is one way of deciding when you intend to take it position. Then here you come across a commodity pairs. Then USD CAD is showing 5 pips positive net change. That is it's a denominator and USD is showing positive net change 5, five pips. So it is USD gaining move. Australian dollar and US dollar it is showing 25 pips negative net change. So Australian dollar is losing and USD is gaining and it is a USD gaining move. Whereas the commodity pairs are showing the USD gaining moves and the 
majors are showing mixed moves. The USD gaining move and USD weakening move alternate. So when they try to do this sort of moves, it is mainly to handle the crosses for the weak beginning. And normally for the weak beginning, they try to make small swings and then later on increase the swings, the spread between the low and the high. So they try to make an upward stop and on the high and the lower downward stop and below that of the low and try to widen the spread and then later on set the trend either on the upside or on the downside. So you need to understand for such big moves they use the data release as the trigger. So what we do is we note down the initial lows and the highs. So today's initial low, 27th of May, I just noted down, 1.2915 is the low in the case of euro, 1.2943 is the high. So they are not breached the high or the low, market is in the middle level. Then GBP, 1.5118 is the low, 1.5137 is the high. It is again in the middle level, 1.5. 5123 and not breach the high or the low from the start of the day. Then USD yen 100.80 is the low, 101.30 is the high, and it is again in the middle level. In USD CHF 9610 and 9630, and so 9636 has become the new high about six pips. So in the case of USDCHF, they gained more, which is indicated clearly that Euro is showing only 11 pips negative net change, whereas USDCHF is showing 19 pips positive net change. So slightly higher than this. So they intend to gain some levels in the case of Euro CHF, and that is why they are trying to make this sort of move. Then in the case of Canadian dollar, 1.0308 is the low, 1.0332 is the high. So they are not breached the low or the high. Australian dollar, 96.16 and 96.58 are the lows and the highs. They are not breached it. Excepting CHF, all other currencies, they are just keeping it in a range. So they could initially handle CHF and try to make some moves pertaining to that of the CHF crosses. See, now GBP positive net change, USD CHF positive net change. As a result, you will come across GBP CHF will gain more, around 20 pips, 18 plus 2, around that. Because the pip value is not exactly 1, so you will find variation with regard to that. Then similarly in the case of Euro Yen, you will find that it is making negative net change because 11 is negative net change, 21 is negative net change. As a result, a cumulative negative net change will be seen in the case of Euro Yen. So they are handling mainly the crosses of the majors. So that we need to understand. And also in Europe and US, it is going to be a holiday. The market might receive thin volume and so the players may not be very active in making big moves in the market. So expected market moves for today, swing and firm up move during that of the Japanese session and a small dip during early European and then rise during the European session are expected and swing and rise moves are expected during that of the US session. So last week of the month, volatile and quick rise moves may be seen and they are expected to make the whips or moves in the market. Be prepared for that and don't become bullish or bearish when they make such big moves and immediately they will change the market sentiment. So keep an eye on it and don't be moved with it of the market sentiments. Then contrarian moves are bound to be there in order to handle the crosses and quick drops or buy opportunities in all the four majors. So you can buy whenever you come across very quick drop and definitely they are expected to gain more levels. Then visible USD weakening moves are expected in the month of June and that is pertaining to that of the numerators, Euro, GBB and Australian dollar. But 
USDN and USDCHF and also Canadian dollar, they are expected to gain levels, making USD gaining move. As a result, you will come across very little impact with regard to that of the US dollar index. Because some currencies losing and some currencies gaining and the US dollar index will be balanced mostly by that. Okay. And let me explain to you with regard to the various currencies here. First of all, you have to understand the behavior of the respective currencies. Euro, for example, it is known to make either way moves similar to that of GPP. So, if you have one buy position or a sell position, suppose by mistake after the gain you have taken a buy position, Without adding more position, without giving risk to your equity, if you simply hold it for a few days, one or two days or a week, definitely you will be able to book profit in them, Euro and GBP. In the case of GBP, they try to make some extended move on the downside or on the upside and because it is relatively less volume currency when compared to Euro, so they use GBP to create the market sentiment and you know last week early part of the last week they have been making a very quick drop in the case of GBP almost 1.500 uh, level mainly to create the fear and the bearish feel and subsequently they gain the levels and in the case of GBP USDN they went up to 3.5 and then made the quick drop Always keep in mind the quick moves or false moves. Why they had done it like that in the case of USDN? Because they quickly gained the levels and booked a profit with regard to all the buys. Because if they want to rise the market, they have to buy it when the others sell. And after buying everything, they have to quickly exit out of the positions, creating the bullish field and uh, the rise is non-stoppable and then subsequently they made a very quick drop so those who had taken a buy during small corrections would have been stopped out or they might become jittery when it has made about 200 pips drop on Friday and then subsequently they are consolidating here and buying it against the cells what they had done it last week around 102-103 levels so those levels sell they try to book profit so what happens when they buy it around 101 102 103 then with the 200 pips profit it will be less below 100 their average buy level will be below 100 after the profit then they buy it at 102 103 104 105 and take it to 105 and book profit again and come back to 102 50 103 and buy again and take up the market to the next level they cannot continuously <coughs> buy and rise the market because if they buy like that they will not have adequate margin they will not have adequate margin to further rise the market so they become overbought once they become overbought you find that they have to necessarily book profit in order to release the margin and then they can reinvest the margin to buy at a different level or a different currency so they have to necessarily take care of their positions and they are making the rise or the drop of the currencies mainly to earn money book profit <coughs> And since they are deployed huge money into that of the market and they try to see by all possible means that they don't lose any in any of their trade. And you know that the greatest risk is unexpected calamities can happen anytime in the world. And similarly, somebody can die and change the market sentiment. So they are afraid of it, even though they have the total control of the market and still unpredictable can happen in that in such a situation if they exit with regard to their holding positions they should not incur loss they should not incur a huge loss 
due to unexpected events if that means they are taking a great risk so in order to avoid taking any sort of risk they try to book profit consolidate for a long time and try to earn money in small swings of 100 200 pips swings and then that profit is used as a cushion to take a further higher level buys so that when they try to gain more levels by buying at a higher level in a circular trade even though the market goes up their average will be much lower than that of the market normally what happens you buy at 1 or 3 for example usd n and then subsequently usd n has come to 100 or 101 you buy it at 101 as an averaging and in the process of averaging your average will be 1 or 2 which will be lower which will be higher than that of the market buy price market current level so that is why you find that in in order to average you need to increase the lower level buys and when you increase the lower level buys what happens without your knowledge your reasonable margin is taken more and when more reasonable margin is taken out then when the market drops about 50 pips from there you become a fraud you realize that you have taken more positions so our way of averaging is totally different from their players way of averaging what they do is they try to buy here and drop the market buy here drop the market buy here and their average comes to about 100 then quickly they buy and raise the market to 102 and see that they are able to hold 102 by doing circular trades keep their own buy order at 102 and sell it to that buy order sell it to that so when they do circular trade they don't lose or gain but the traders who had taken the buy position they quickly book profit but the traders who had taken the sell position try to sell in order to average then afterwards when they take it to 103 the trader sells later on realize that he has over traded on the sell side and he has to do the short covering at 104 105 so this is how they do the alternation with regard to their game in a season so you have to understand at what side you are whether you are on the right side or on the wrong side but keep in mind they have to buy first of all the positions in order to exit of the positions they cannot do short selling straight so when they drop and accumulate the buy positions you try to accumulate the buy at those levels where they stop cutting the new low for more than 30 minutes to 2 hours then you will be able to definitely book profit after keeping stop at entry so why i explained all those things because many of the traders when the forecast is given they blindly commit without understanding what is happening in the market and why such volatility is happening in the market and many of the people continue to ask the surprise questions or they become surprised and ask the questions why suddenly euro has dropped why suddenly gbb has dropped why suddenly euro has gained and they continue to ask such questions if somebody say that okay it is because of the fundamental rules then okay but the fundamental says that there need not be that much of drop but still the drop has happened they try to analyze it in depth and fail to understand why the market has dropped why the market has gained in the real sense because they have to drop the market to buy the positions and gain the levels to book profit so that if we understand we can go along with them and we will not become afraid when they drop the market we will identify it as a great buy opportunities along with them and there is no hurry to buy as soon as they make the drop you can just observe it for a day or two and see that the new low what they have set is not been breached and then carefully you can enter long and there is no impulsiveness required in the market and that is why you find that those who have been trading patiently in the market are able to earn consistently the money the impulsive traders they quickly commit the position and later on see that oh i had taken a high level buy i could have waited i could have waited i could have waited so every time they think about it and subsequently when they commit a new position then again the same mistake happens and he himself 
comment that I could have waited. Then in the process, he feels that, okay, he has taken a wrong position, cut the position and later on sees that the market reverses and move as he has expected. Again, he thinks that I could have waited. Avoid cutting the position so that the market has gone up, I would have earned money. Instead, in an impulsive way, I just cut the position. So, market is here to punish the impulsive traders. If you are calm and you are able to understand your capabilities and how much of positions you can hold and how much of spreading the risk you can do and how patiently you can wait and take all measures to limit the risk like hedging or a stop, then you will be able to really see that money making is not that difficult. <laughs> Impulsive traders, you want to do about 50 trades, 100 trades in a given day and end up in doing scalping etc. because they do not want to miss any of the opportunities in the market. But no one will be in a position to grab all the opportunities of the market. <coughs> because there are limitations as human we will not be able to grab every 2015 swing and capture the profit we can only do it for some time and later on we become fatigued mentally tired so there is no point in stressing ourselves and committing positions in the market and if we do that once it, you are in a stressful condition your brain fails to think properly and it triggers the impulsiveness <coughs> so if you want to control impulsiveness then you have to first of all watch the market casually and wait for any quick move happening in the market when they are not breached the initial high or the initial low there is no po point in committing a position and similarly when they are making the contrary moves there is no point in committing position in majors you can only commit positions in the crosses so that way, if you are able to have a very clear cut understanding, then it is easy for you to take a decision. Then also you have to follow the session timings. The session timings are vital. And so when the European session start, early European session, late European session, see here the timings are given. <coughs> Sorry. 0030 to 7 GMT is the Japanese session, 730 to 13 is the European session, 1330 to 2030 is the US session. So wait for the session and wait for 30 minutes from the session start and if the low is not breached, when the market is near the low, take a buy. When if the market is near the high and not breach the high, you try to take a sell. You will be able to easily do a safe trade and close it within the session. Let me answer to the questions which are asked here. Okay, Azra has asked a question. What is expected to happen in RC? RC has come to that level of 0 0.96. Briefly, they are shown below that of 0 0.96. It is expected to gain the levels to 0 0.98 to start with. Then afterwards we could see it could go again to 1.02 in coming month. But if you want to do buy and sell trade in LC, try to see that you are able to keep stop at entry once a position makes profit so that you can do the position trade in that. But position trade in the case of Euro and GP will be much easier when compared to that of Aussie because they are expected to make volatile moves, more volatile moves in the case of Australian dollar when compared to that of Euro and GBP. Then Anil Mangal, uh, is it possible that you can show on any chart what the swing dip rise moves will look like? I explained already in my trading system webinars uh, I have given it in FX Street and explained to you, uh, explained to the, to the audience there the difference between the swing, dip, all those things, rise, firm up, etc. And if you listen to those recorded webinars, you will be able to get the details, please. And every time I cannot uh, show it in the chart because I am of an opinion that the chart is the one which gets magnified when the small moves happen during consolidations and that gives the real trigger for the 
traders to become emotional. So when I discourage chart, so obviously I should not show it for you to understand. Then Mohan Kumar, when session time will change in coming days? No, session timings will change only in the month of October. Afterwards, once a daylight saving system is changed to that of the normal standard time, then at the time you will come across the change happening there. Then, Chao Kiat, what is your view about Euro GBB cross? Euro GBB cross which has come to 85 area and it is expected to come down again. They are expected to gain more levels in the case of GBB when compared to that of Euro. As a result, Euro GBB is expected to come down. But today, they could make small swings. Still Wednesday, they could make either way moves in the case of Euro GBB, build up sell positions and later on drop it to 0 0.83 area. Then Mohan Kumar, how much dip expected in Euro? You know, they may just breach the low by about a few pips, probably about 10 pips. And then, because they have to earn money by stop -ins. Whenever they make such consolidations, they have to make a downward stop and before making an upward stop -end. Without that, they will not be able to earn. They are not merciful. They wanted to hit the stops and earn. So, probably about 10 to 12 pips they may make and platforms might even breach the stops. I mean, uh, hit the stops below that of 1.29. It depends upon the nature of the platform. And they say that variable spread and hit all level stops and tell the client that it is variable spread. Variable spread. So when they say variable spread, you immediately think that, okay, it is something which is technically possible in the market variable spread and because of that our stop is hit but they are all nothing but manipulations and see actually the quote comes to that of the platform provider as a single quote 1.2929 it will come as a single quote from the bank and they keep the bid 3 pips below and the ask at that level so that if you want to sell you have to sell 3 pips below and if you want to buy, you can buy it at the market. So that is how they keep the spread of 2 pips, 3 pips, etc. And variable spread is sometimes it will be 2 pips, sometimes it will become 1 pip spread, sometimes it will become 10 to 12 pip spread. Once it becomes 10 to 12 pips or 50 pips and there are platform offering 100 pips during the data release time, simply hold the bid and rise the ask. All your stops will be hit. So, you might be a very smart trader and you may think that you are doing all analysis effectively and definitely you have to see the profit, but the variable spread is the one that will kill all your positions. So, understand the tricks played by that of the players, understand the trick played by that of the platform providers. And in a hard way, if you learn it by losing money, you might be blaming the market. Actually, your own platform provider has acted as a backstabber. And they have stabbed you at the back and grabbed the money. And see, the platform, as long as the platform providers are concerned, they cannot earn it from the market. If they are capable of earning it from the market, they, there is no need for them to provide the platform. They can calmly earn from that of the market and keep themselves but they want all others to trade so when they expect the traders to trade and they are bound to earn money only from their own clients so in the process they think of innovative methods and try to earn the money from their own traders Then Mohan Kumar, Euro may reach 1.27, it is very unlikely, sir. Uh, then Chao Kiat, are you expecting GBB drop below? No. They have been very carefully doing it, even though they have been consistently dropping. Uh, last week, GBB, they kept 1.50 uh, 
effectively and it is very unlikely that they could make it downward move and this week you could come across aggressive gain after that there will be a drop and then for the gain and during next week you will come across more gaining moves happening in the market and that will be visible gaining moves the visible USD weakening move is expected to happen from next week till such time they could make more and more of consolidation and try to accumulate the buy positions so I take this opportunity to thank FX Street for the facilities provided to present the webinar and also you people who have come here to listen to my webinar and also the recorded webinar and I'll come next week sorry next week uh, I will not be able to present the webinar, I have got some other commitments, so I will come on 10th of June, that is the following Monday, and then try to give Asian session live market analysis, and till such time, wish you all very happy trading, and understand who is trading against you, and try to see that it, you have the limitations with regard to the money power, so don't try to beat them. You try to trade along with them and earn money from that of the market. Thank you one and all. See you on 10th.